Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the channel and thank you for tuning in. Your help and support has been amazing. Thank you very much. If you've been following along, you'll know that we've got the transmission rebuilt in the last video. Clutch packs and everything like that. Uh, in this video, we're just going to be working on the valve body. I got a Transgo shift kit. But this shift kit is more like a fix kit. It's not really a performance upgrade. It's more to take care of inherent uh, factory problems. Please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like. You can also find me on Instagram at Gibson Garage SS and TikTok at GG Speed Shop. Feel free to leave a comment and share your experiences with me. Now let's get into the video. So the transmission is put back together for the most part and the car is in the air. So we just got to get the transmission out of that actually because we're going to be using the valve body in that car. Uh, because, well, we had troubles getting this connector off and I was thinking we might have broke it or tweaked it and there was some damage and then I started taking this stuff apart and it's just, uh, while well, I'm just not confident that this connection is still good because man was i wrenching on this thing oh it's magnetic to get this screw out of here and i remember that this is the original one to this car right and i was trying to change a seal here at one point the very seal that leaks around the housing or whatever wherever it's at i wanted to change it because it seemed like it might be leaking but i could not get this screw out while it was you know at any time when it was under the car installed just couldn't get out so i just said forget it i'll just refill it the leak isn't that bad and now that i have it out uh and you know it's been over a year year and a half maybe since we did the transmission swap to the junkyard transmission i'm remembering that i had this problem while i'm trying to remove the valve body from the transmission body but so it's damaged anyway i'm not going to risk using it even if it's not damaged we will use the one that's in that car. I know it worked well enough. I don't know if the screw's gonna be stuck like this one, but we'll see. So before I can even think about removing the transmission, I've actually got to remove the exhaust and the drive line. I gotta remove all the exhaust because this part of the exhaust wraps around the transmission and just won't let it come out. And then this stuff has to be removed just so you can get the drive line disconnected. Phew, that only took all day, but it's out and I just had to remove all this stuff and that big piece of hunk of metal over there. Check this out. So I cut out the suitcase muffler that comes stock and I added some piping to keep this parallel because on mine it did a little bend over. So I did added that and then added some over here so it's all stock diameter piping. Some inferior quality metal too as you can tell it's rusting. I did not get some aluminized. I thought I did. Replace them with these Magna Flows. I still got these guys in the back, but there's supposed to be a separation right somewhere around here. And I welded it together, so now they're stuck like that. And there's no change in sound, by the way. If you guys are looking for a more detailed video on how to pull this out, I've got another one. It's on, on the Magnum folder if you go to my webpage. It's on there called a transmission swap. I'm not rebuilding anything. I'm just taking one out and putting a new one in and I go through bolt by bolt and everything on how to get that, how to get that done. It should come right out. I already removed all the bolts. Oh. all right so here we are finally the reason for this video and that's to get and that's to get this shift kit installed into the valve body finishing the assembly of the uh, transmission and then getting it in there uh, there is i'm not going to go through and test all kinds of stuff there's a much better video on that by the guys at uh s-u-s s-i-u -S -S i think it's called s-i-u i don't know the channel i'll I think I'll put a link in one of the other videos. We're just going to take this apart. First, we're going to get in and see what's in here. And then uh, we'll take this apart and just replace what we're supposed to replace. Clean it up, of course. Get all this old nasty stuff off here. Then we'll slap it back together. And this is part number 722.6A. 
pretty simple. That's that. Okay, so not a lot in this kit. You see all these plates here? There's a plate here, a couple plates on the back. I've got this upper half has two plates on each side. And these are all holding in valves, stuff just like this. And this is all for, it's just crazy mind blowing stuff, all for shifting, of course. And uh, there's, <clears throat> it said that there are like four shift sections and each section has four valves to associate with it. There's no reaming in this kit, so all I'm going to do is just disassemble everything, clean all this black gunk off, uh, and then install the new parts as I put it back together. I've only been able to identify one piece that definitely goes there and the only difference is this new one's got a little bit extra back here I don't know if the spring goes in deeper or not as deep or what yet but there's still these pieces I need to figure out where they go and these pins this pin and a couple of springs and a sleeve here So the other rest of the stuff goes right here. You just replace all of the used ones with new ones. Right there and there. And this last spring is actually meant to go right here. But it's the I was told, anyways, from the videos I watched, that it's for the older models. Now this is a 2006. And these transmissions, the NAG one has been around since like 96, 97. Long before they put them in these cars. So those older models are what might be what required this spring change right here, but uh, this is a whole different valve and spring setup than the older models, I believe. And then also, there might be something here too. See, this is designed to ride on an unused portion of the bore, but this has a surface area that's just as large. And the ones I saw in the other video they had a much smaller surface area like just where the grooves are over here and so making this taller piece here would make sense because you're writing on an unused portion of the bore out here but this guy is just the same so I'm gonna double look at that video and make sure that's what I saw but it's almost like the shift kit if you've got a 2006 and up like I said I'm gonna verify it's, it might be pointless 
all you're really getting is just replacement parts for here and here you know the three those three things and a replacement part here that might be unnecessary because you've anyway and then there's that small spring which they say is meant to go right here but again I mean my is it supposed to be smaller to make it looser I don't know it's hard to get an answer especially when it didn't come with the paper instructions that there were supposed to be instructions I saw them in another video I did forget about this replacement this whole assembly here is supposed to replace this spring and valve here because there could be wear excessive wear right here that happens sometimes in the aluminum bore so this will be sloppy so they replace it with this sleeve and this spacer and they machine their own valve to go inside there all right here it is all assembled all torqued up I got all the casting flash knocked off so no hand slicers while I go and put it in. Ow! Except for that one. But that's okay. We'll work around it. Anybody know why that's okay? Anybody see what I did wrong? Possibly? Anybody? I'll give you a second. Go ahead. Take a second. That's the wrong bell housing. I rebuilt it on the V6 because if you remember I pulled this from the floor this was the original body to my car, but this is the bell housing to the 2.7 V6. You can see the junkyard marks here, and then this is the one I, that just pulled out of the car. There's those junkyard marks there that has the correct bell housing on it for the V8 with the starter on the passenger side. So now I've got to swap the bell housings, but that's not a big deal because that's exactly how I did it when I went and got the junkyard transmission. I just swapped bell housings, threw it back in the car, and we got by for a good while on that. So I'm pretty confident it'll work. And here in the championship, it, uh, it counts out as if they're not finished. Every time I back out. So every time I back out, go back in, it's like, oh, the next track. Oh, my God. So yeah, it did not unlock all the series after that. So I'm like, couldn't figure out how to fix it, so I ended up having to restart everything from scratch again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's one for you. It's like, yeah, start trying out my NASCAR game, getting into it. And he's like, I got the NASCAR Heat 4. I'm like, oh shit, I'm like, that's old as fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. Fuck. But yeah, this is pretty awesome though. <sighs> they had an inboard camera when they fired it up in the pits and as soon as that thing kicked in you see his eyes just boom just go wide open like what did i just what did i just get myself into <laughs> <laughs> yeah f1 i can't imagine even no no this is not f1 this is top fuel like oh. the, the, the dragsters oh, 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 oh yeah still that's pretty that's pretty fast too well i follow freaking clay milliken and it's freaking like dude I want to go to one. Oh yeah, I'll watch one. I can sit on the sidelines all day and watch them. Especially when you hear about freaking uh, what's his face talking about. He's like, yeah, they got this university that's like ten miles away from the track over in Florida, and they have a size. You want these tubes out of here, right? Yeah, they just need to get brought down here. Hold on, there's a problem. Rubber grommet on one. But yeah, it picks up in their seismograph thing whenever they launch the top fuel cars. Oof. Like it's an earthquake. Wow. That's pretty nuts. How are we looking? Where is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I've been working on it all day. The sun's going down. It's like 7.30. 
and I finally got it all buttoned up almost everything except for like the last couple bolts for the tail pipes down there so they're a little wiggly but it's it's hanging on the rubber and it's tight there and it's tight there so we're good so and I've got about seven quarts in here about a half quart shy of total fill but I want to see if I can start it up get it off the ramps and uh, yeah we'll just, we'll just start there Well, it drives and it's not puking fluid anywhere. That's a plus. So now I just gotta let it warm up and see if it still goes into gear and drives. Cause that was a problem before. I could start it up and drive it up on the ramps when it was cold, but um, I'd get around the block and as soon as it warmed up, no gears. And if you heard that rattling like I did, don't freak out like I did. It's just the tailpipes. Because they're not those, they're not bolted up on the back. Still cold. All right, it's the next morning. I drove until it got dark last night around the neighborhood. And like I said, it was already getting really close. I only put about six miles on it. It's definitely warmed up before I even left the driveway. And it didn't give up on me. Took it on the freeway. It's shifting beautifully. Everything seems to be working great on this thing i think it's a win very awesome win i'm stoked gotta miss the power of a v8 hemi too that thing they're driving a chrysler that's no fun but thanks for watching guys i appreciate it please hit that subscribe button hit the like button leave a comment if you if you want let me know what you guys are up to until next time i'll see you later and if you're wondering why I have the back end up in the air again, well, you're just going to have to check out my Instagram, GG Speed Shop, or Facebook, Gibson Garage. TikTok is Gibson Garage SS.